What up YouTube, it's Rules for Rebels here, and today we're going to be talking about the differences between AliExpress and Alibaba, which one is right from you, for you, and which one you should order from. So I'm going to kick this video off by showing you guys uh, AliExpress as well as Alibaba. And as you guys know, if you watch my videos or if you've bought my Fiverr gig, a lot of times I recommend people who are just starting out order from AliExpress as opposed to Alibaba. Each have pros, each have cons, each have their benefits, each are more suited to certain situations. Uh, typically, if you're looking to order smaller quantities, AliExpress. If you're newer to e-commerce or importing, I recommend AliExpress as well. You're able to pay by credit card. Uh, items actually have prices, not everything is a negotiation. And items are typically shipped to your door, so you're not having to deal with freight forwarders. You're not having to learn how to fill out customs paperwork. Uh, you know, it's hard enough getting started. It's overwhelming enough getting started in e-commerce, let alone, you know, now trying to figure out how to do customs paperwork, how to negotiate with suppliers, uh, all that type of stuff. Alibaba, if you're looking to order larger quantities, uh, you're going to get much, much, much better prices than from AliExpress. Also, if you're looking to get into private labeling, uh, you're more likely to find suppliers who are willing to print your logo or customize a product uh, because Alibaba is more made to order, whereas AliExpress is more traders selling stuff. But let's take a quick look here. So first off, this is the homepage of AliExpress. This is the homepage of Alibaba. Um, as you can see, things are categorized. Um, you know, this looks somewhat like eBay or Amazon that you're kind of familiar with. You can look at different product categories. Let's go look at consumer electronics. Um, let's look at speakers. And as you'll see here, you know, here's some different speakers. They actually have prices listed here. Um, you know, you can go around and look at prices. You actually know what things cost. Uh, let's hop in here. I'm going to take a look at this and we're going to show you what a listing looks like. So these are $6.47 a piece. Uh, they do have a bulk price. So let's see what that is. Uh, additional 2% off if you order five pieces or more. You know, the, the bulk price isn't huge, but you know, they give you something off. Sometimes they'll actually show, you know, if you order five pieces or more, the price goes down to $5.50, whatever it may be. Uh, but this is what a listing page looks like. This is what kind of a search on there looks like. Again, we see prices listed for everything, right? Well, if we go over to Alibaba, this is what the home page looks like. Um, let's see if we type in Bluetooth speaker. So, you know, here we can see some of the different products. This is actually kind of cool. This little Android guy. Um, but okay. And here you see, we have a price, we have a range of prices. So seven to eight fifty. Uh, 4.8 to $10, 350 to 550, 20 to 40. These prices aren't that big of ranges, but I mean, some products you'll see that like, uh, you know, the price may range from 10 cents to $9. <clears throat> and it really depends on how many you order and how well you negotiate with the supplier. Now let's look at something like uh, paracord bracelets. And we'll do the same thing on here. Paracord bracelets. Uh, now, in a second, I'm going to walk you guys through the actual article and the pros and cons and things like that. But uh, let's see. So we got paracord bracelets. We'll go for kind of a more basic one. Okay. So these are $1.36. Uh, it doesn't look like these guys have a bulk price listed. Uh, but we see the exact price, right? Now we look at paracord bracelets on here. And let's try to find a, a somewhat similar item. Okay. So here... We're looking at $1.65 per piece, but there's no minimum. So I can order one piece. This includes the shipping price, and it's going to ship direct to my door. Here, we can get them for as cheap as $0.65. Cents. So that's, what, like 87% off or something like that. So we can get them very cheap, uh, but the price also ranged from $0.65 cents to $3. So you potentially could be getting it for 80% less than AliExpress. You also could potentially be paying $3.00. And I will say there are some situations where I've actually found products cheaper on AliExpress than I have on Alibaba. I'll say that's rare, but I'll give you guys an example. So I was selling, it was a bracelet. Uh, on AliExpress, I buy it for $1.10. On Alibaba, they wanted, I think, $1.63. So I contacted the supplier and I said, look, you know, I, I know this isn't a huge order, but, you know, what's the price if I order 100 pieces? Uh, I could do, you know, $1.63. I said, okay, well, what's the price if I order 1,000 pieces? I can go down to 110 So I, I messaged a guy back. I said, look, I said, I can buy these. 
on Alibaba for 110 and I only got to buy 10 pieces, he wasn't willing to come down. So I was able to get a better price on Alibaba. And even if I ordered a thousand pieces from AliExpress, they were only going to match the Alibaba price on 10. So in some rare instances, you can actually find items cheaper on AliExpress. Uh, generally though, if you're willing to order larger quantities, you're going to get a better price on Alibaba. So I just wanted to start this off by kind of showing you guys the homepage, what a search looks like and what a listing looks like. Oh, you know what? There's one thing I neglected to show you. So hypothetically, if we wanted to order from here, we would just click either add to cart or buy now. We enter our, you know, pick the color and it's, you know, I'm not logged in, but basically I would just go and pay with my credit card, just like, you know, you normally would on an eBay or Amazon. You're very familiar with the process. On the flip side, if I want to order from here, uh, I have to contact the supplier. I have to negotiate a price. Um, I have to tell them how I want to pay. Uh, and here we see um, their payment terms. You can pay Western Union, MoneyGram, PayPal, which is rare, uh, escrow, which is typically referred to as TT, or that's trade assurance. It's basically where you wire the money to Alibaba, and Alibaba makes sure you receive the item and you're happy with it before uh, they turn over the payment. So it's kind of like a, an insurance policy or like an escrow system. Uh, to be quite honest, I, off the top of my head, I don't know what uh, LCDA or PT means. Sometimes what these guys will do, if you're ordering large, large quantities, you only have to pay 30% up front and you pay the remaining 70% once the items land at the port or once you receive the items. So there's all types of different payment options and things like that. But with this, because these are small and light, I could probably have them shipped direct to my door and not deal with the customs. Uh, that I believe was referred to as FOB. Uh, however, for heavier items, it's gonna ship to a port. So for example, I'm in Chicago. If I ordered these, they're gonna ship to either like uh, Houston or LA most likely. And then I have to figure out how to get these from Houston or LA to my house or my, my office. Um, also, I have to pay the customs fees. I have to fill out the customs paperwork uh, or I need to hire a freight forwarder. So Alibaba gets a lot more confusing. Um, so that's why if, I, if you're starting out, you're probably gonna be ordering smaller quantities. You're probably not familiar with customs paperwork and freight forwarders. That's why I recommend people kind of test the waters and start out on AliExpress before moving over to Alibaba. And potentially the sell, you know, typically Alibaba is supposed to be factories there's a lot of traders but typically aliexpress is more manufacturing i'm sorry alibaba is more manufacturers aliexpress is more traders so that they're essentially a middleman and that's why the prices are, high, are higher as well as it's lower uh moqs or minimum order quantity like i said a lot of times you can order a single piece um so that's why you're you know the, the less you buy the more you're going to pay so let, let's kind of get into this article so should i order from aliexpress which is right for you um, if you're interested in selling on eBay, Amazon, FBA, or want to set up your own Shopify store, uh, you're going to need to source products. Now, I think a lot of people get hung up on everything needs to be sourced from China because China products are cheap. There's a lot of great products you can source right here in the US of A, and not everything needs to be purchased from China, but you know, for things like paracord bracelets, cell phone holders, uh, window mounts, etc., cetera, those, those type of cheap items, you probably are going to get the best price out of China. Uh, so let's give you guys some bullet points on Alibaba versus AliExpress. So Alibaba is mainly a business to business platform or B2B. Um, it connects manufacturers and traders, mainly Chinese, but you do get some from India, Pakistan, everywhere um, with overseas buyers, uh, whether it be in the US, Latin America, wherever else. Um, there is no built-in shopping cart system with Ali, with, as with AliExpress. Uh, eBay, Amazon, etc. The order terms are negotiated through either their built-in chat system or you can go back and forth via email or a lot of my suppliers will contact me on apps like WhatsApp um, to talk, you know, since it's free to call. Um, and this can be a little bit more confusing than AliExpress to new buyers. AliExpress is very straightforward. I mean, if you've ever bought anything online, you know how to work AliExpress. Alibaba is a little bit trickier. Um, there's no commissions or transaction fees paid to Alibaba. How Alibaba makes their money is through membership fees, uh, such as a gold supplier. And let's see, let's take a look at someone who's, uh, actually I'll do a search up here. We can select gold supplier. And basically these sellers pay to be gold suppliers. Um, and that's basically how Alibaba monetizes um, their site. Uh, 
Alibaba does go to, to some steps of verifying that each supplier is a legally registered business. There is, however, no guarantee of their products, their customer service, etc. cetera. Uh, if you were to also opt for assess supplier, uh, this means that the company was assessed by a third party inspection company. Um, and there is a report uh, available for downloads that'll typically say, do they really have the certifications that they claim to have uh, and things along those lines. Um, and basically Alibaba focuses on made to order goods. So um, for really popular items, like when hoverboards were really popular, yeah, they would have some hoverboards made, but more often than not, when you place an order, that's the point when they're gonna start making it. It's not like there's a factory with thousands of bins of paracord bracelets sitting around and when you place your order, they just go and grab a box of 100. No, if you order 100 pieces, they're gonna make those 100 pieces just for you. And that's why you're able to private label or put your logo, your name on products because the products you're buying haven't been made yet. So, um, you know, you can say, oh, you know, when you make these, put my uh, logo here. Or uh, one thing I'll show you guys real quick. Let's see here. Here's a, uh, in if you wanna create your own products, that that's a little bit more complicated. You have to uh, create flashlight. You need to hire like uh, CAD designers or CAD, uh, CAD designers and things like that. However, you can have a factory tweak your product. So just for example, let's say I want to sell a Cree flashlight, right? You see here how the uh, button or the rubber nub on it to turn it on is uh, orange. I could tell the factory, look, you know, I'm not going to make my whole entire new flashlight, but could you make this button neon green on mine? And hopefully I'm the only seller who has a neon green button on their flashlight. So if somebody else tries to hop on my Amazon listing and piggyback off of it, uh, some sellers are probably going to complain when they get a flashlight with an orange button instead of a neon green. And as you can see, this says a hospital. So this is, is somebody's private, uh, private label or private created brand. And does it say that they're Kelly shop? Huh, I kind of expected their brand to be there. Uh, but this is what I mean by you're not going to create a whole new product, but you can kind of tweak an existing product and, and still in, in a way have a product of your own. Um, so that's kind of the bullet points for Alibaba. As for AliExpress, AliExpress is technically a B2C, which is business to consumer platform. However, many resellers, you know, like yourself, me, etc., cetera, uh, do use AliExpress for ordering wholesale supplies or items. Uh, AliExpress is also, in, in terms of AliExpress being a B2C or business to consumer model, um, you know, eBay and Amazon aren't available in a lot of countries. If you live in parts of Africa, if you live in Latin America, um, if you live in Pakistan, you most likely can't order from eBay or Amazon. So AliExpress is a great place to shop. Because of that, a lot of the goods or a lot of the certifications are only made to, you know, obviously USA, Canada, the UK have some of the highest uh, standards in terms of materials, safety standards, what they allow into the country. So because this site caters, AliExpress caters a lot to like Russia and a lot of other countries, you may find that the certifications are up to par to meet, you know, say Russia's consumer safety standards, but maybe not the USA. So keep that in mind when you're ordering items. I think the hover, whole hoverboard fiasco is kind of a good example of this. A lot of these items may have met safety standards in other countries, but they're not going to meet safety standards uh, in the US. Um, but even though Ali, AliExpress is technically a business to consumer platform. I think not a lot of people in the USA order from AliExpress. People aren't familiar uh, with ordering from outside of the USA. People don't want to order something and wait three weeks or a month to get it. So most people are, are pretty content paying an extra couple dollars and just ordering it off Amazon and getting it in two days with their Amazon Prime. So uh, even though it's technically business to consumer, a lot of people like yourself and me who sell on eBay, sell on Amazon, sell on FBA, we order our products from here. And like I said, I recommend people new to e-commerce start out on AliExpress because it's easy. Um, you can order smaller quantities. So I always recommend to people, you know, order 5, 10, 15, 20 pieces of inventory, test it out, send it off to FBA, sell it yourself, make sure it's going to sell before, you know, re-upping and placing another larger order. Uh, and AliExpress is a great way to, uh, to start out doing that. Now you can, a lot of Alibaba suppliers, you know, if you tell them it's a test order or a sample order, they will do smaller stuff, but it's a little bit more complicated. So for anybody who's, who's just starting out or, or it's your first time importing, uh, you know, maybe, maybe place a couple orders on AliExpress and start out there. So we've kind of covered the bullet points on AliExpress and Alibaba. 
Uh, my screen recording is about to uh, reach its limit here, so I'm going to cut this off and we're going to pick up in just a second with Alibaba versus AliExpress and doing a breakdown. Okay, guys, so picking up where we left off, Alibaba versus AliExpress, the breakdown. So first we're going to talk about minimum order quantity. This is often referred to as MOQ. And when you talk to suppliers, don't say, how many do I need to order? Uh, refer to it as uh, MOQ, reason being it, it it's, uh, what was the word I'm looking for? It, it kind of shows you you've been around the block, so to speak. Um, you know, and typically don't refer to things as like, how many speakers do I need to buy? Refer to it as units. And the reason I say this, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, they know what you're talking about, but the, there are language barriers. So by talking in very concrete terms like that, there's much less chance of confusion happening. And the other thing by using, I guess if you want to call it industry terms or lingo, um, they know you're not just, you know, even if you are some guy who just set up an Amazon account yesterday and wants to start buying, it, it makes it seem as if you've been doing this for a while, which means you're less likely to be taken advantage of and they'll take you more seriously. So if you're being ignored by Alibaba suppliers, uh, maybe rethink kind of how you're speaking with them and how you're contacting them. Uh, but basically, in order to be, to be profitable, you know, these factories work on really small margins. So in order to be profitable, they need to make so many units on each order to make it worth even, you know, setting up the presses, so to speak, or buying raw goods or raw materials. Uh, the suppliers need to order a minimum amount of raw materials in order to be profitable. And in turn, they require a minimum order quantity from you. If you can't reach this MOQ, many suppliers won't do business with you. However, what I've found is that many suppliers who say, you know, our MOQ is a thousand pieces are willing to make as little as 50 or a hundred if you approach them in the right way. And, uh, you know, maybe even call it a test order or, you know, let, let me see how this sells. And then I may be interested in buying a thousand pieces. Uh, I don't recommend lying to them because your, your goal here is to, is, uh, is to establish a long running relationship with them. You know, don't say I'm going to order a hundred thousand pieces if you're not going to order a hundred thousand pieces, but even if you want to start small, let them know, you know, let, let me place a test order. I'm going to check the quality. I'm going to see how things sell. And if everything's good, you know, my next order will be 500 pieces or a thousand pieces. So, uh, <coughs> Alibaba suppliers tend to have a relatively high MOQ. Uh, like I said, the reason for this is because they don't make and stock products. Uh, they make products to order, which is why you're able to private label, why you're able to brand your products, why you're able to, to tweak the materials or the colors and things like that. And typically MOQ is valid for a specific product. So let's give you an example of this. Let's say that this supplier who makes this paracord bracelet also makes, we'll say this paracord bracelet. Um, if their MOQ is a hundred pieces, that doesn't mean let me take 25 of this, 25 of this, and 25 of this, because all these use different raw materials. Uh, if the MOQ is a hundred pieces, like I said, they're up to negotiation, but just as a general generality, if their MOQ is a hundred pieces, you can't split it up among three or four products they carry. You need to order a hundred of this one, a hundred of this one, and a hundred of this one. So it's not a hundred split three ways. It's 300 pieces. Um, so that's just one thing I wanted to kind of point out there. Um, Uh, nothing is written in stone, though. No, like I said, all suppliers are different. Most of them are open to, to negotiation. Uh, this is just kind of a generality. Uh, as far as AliExpress, most suppliers here, an MOQ is as little as one unit. Uh, some suppliers I work with require you order like 10 units, but really, really low MOQ. Because this is business to consumer, most consumers don't need 5 or 10 or 50 of an item. So that's why you can find most things by buying as little as one unit, though they do offer discounts if you buy more than one unit. Uh, this is because many of these people are resellers. They're not the actual factory manufacturing it. They buy these items from the factory to resell the same way that you and I do. Um, let's see here. Uh, AliExpress does have a built-in shopping cart. So if you're looking for larger quantities, uh, message the seller and ask them, say, hey, you know, actually, let me show you an example here. So uh, here they don't list a bulk price, right? So this is $1.36 per unit. Well, I, you know, if I'm happy paying it, I can go pay it. But what I can do is some sellers are online right now. So if I hit this guy, I forget if they're going to make me log in or not. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not logged in right now, but if I were logged in, I could start a chat with this guy or I could send him a, a message through the system and I could be like, Hey, you know, I'm looking to order uh, 50 of these. You think you could do a little bit better on the price? And he may come back to me and say, okay, you know what? 
I can do a uh, dollar thirty. Uh, I will say I can do a dollar twenty-five per unit. So you know, if you're looking to, you know, I wouldn't even. If you're just looking to get two or five, I wouldn't even bother messages this, messaging this guy because that's still kind of retail quanti quantity. Uh, but you know, if you're looking to get ten pieces or fifty pieces, you know, send a seller a message. It never hurts to ask. Hey, I'm thinking about buying fifty pieces. What's the best price you can do on that? And even if they can't do a lower price, sometimes they'll give you better shipping. So let's see. This guy's shipping. I'm guessing it's going to be an e packet. Uh, seller shipping method. So 39 to 60 days. If I'm willing to pay an extra dollar and 59 cents, I can cut that delivery time down to 10 to 15 days. For $12, I can have it shipped UPS, which is three to seven days. I will say in my experience, DHL is probably the fastest. Uh, I personally prefer FedEx to UPS, although they're probably going to be about the same amount of time. Uh, oh, see, here we go. DHL. Uh, I typically always opt for DHL if possible. Um, typically you're going to have air packet or, or China mail post, but even if a seller won't come down on price, sometimes at the very least, they'll speed up your shipping method. Uh, let's see, what else are we talking about here? Uh, I did mention how some su suppliers offer lots, which is a larger quantity. Um, uh, I kind of already talked about this. I say, though Alibaba is typically cheaper than AliExpress, there are some instances when you can find products cheaper on AliExpress. Um, let's see. So that, that you know, that's pretty much uh, covering in terms of minimum order quantity. You're going to get lower quantities on AliExpress. You're going to get better prices on Alibaba. Sometimes, so you, sometimes you come across a rare product where you can actually find a cheaper price on AliExpress. So definitely check out both platforms. Uh, in terms of pricing, I've somewhat already touched on this, Alibaba versus AliExpress for pricing. So the price of a product is typically based upon two main factors, the quality of the product and the quantity of the product you want to order. As with anything, you know, bulk gets better pricing. Uh, someone looking to import and resell products should understand these elements when you're considering whether to buy on Alibaba or AliExpress. Okay, guys, I apologize. I had to... Uh cut off the uh, video for a second. I had some business I had to attend to, but I believe we've uh, discussed pricing. I kind of forgot where I left off, but yes, in general, uh, Alibaba prices are going to be lower. Uh, quantities are going to be higher. Uh, AliExpress is going to be a little bit more expensive, uh, but you don't have to order nearly as much. Um, so let's go down to, we're going to continue on discussing about uh, custom design products and private labeling. So many sellers choose to create a brand. This is what's referred to as private labeling. And I know I've for you, those of you who watch my videos, um, you know a lot of times I use the Friendly Swede as a good example. Uh, the Friendly Swede as somebody who really does a nice job of private labeling. Um, look at, he's selling stylus pens. Granted, he's giving you six of them, but he's selling them for $8.99, whereas a lot of other people are, are probably only going to get, you know, 2 or $3 for these. Uh, he's selling paracord bracelets for, you know, 9 to $11.00. Uh, a lot of other sellers are only going to be able to get, again, a couple bucks off these. I mean, you can literally go buy a paracord bracelet off eBay for probably under $2 with free shipping. Um, so how is he able to get $9.99 to $10.99? Well, if we look at his product, it says the Friendly sweet on it. You know, it may seem silly that you're paying an extra $10 just to have a name on it. Uh, but people know his brand. They trust his brand. The quality of paracord bracelets can vary greatly depending on who you're ordering from. Uh, so this guy obviously does a good job of sourcing only the best products. People know that they're going to get a good product when they order from him. I mean, look, at we got 719 uh, positive reviews. And as you guys probably know, you know, for every 50 or 100 people who order a product, probably only one or two are going to take the time to leave a review. So this guy probably has 10 times this amount of sales. And I'm assuming if they haven't left negative feedback, they're happy. Uh, so this guy does a really good job of private labeling his items. Uh, and creating a brand and people know and trust his brand and he's able to get more money for it. Um, so that's what we talk about when we talk about customizing products. I also gave another example where in addition to just, uh, I kind of already talked about this, but Cree flashlight, you you may not be comfortable rolling out an entire new product line, but it's very easy to tell the factory, hey, instead of putting an orange power button on here, could you put on a green one or could you put on a, a neon pink one? And by doing something as simple as that, uh, you're able to have a product different from anybody else. So uh, if we go back and look at these Cree flashlights again, you know, some of them have black buttons on the end. Some of them have orange buttons. Nobody's got a pink one. So, if you know, you know what? look at somebody took my idea here. Uh, some guy put a neon green button at the end of his flashlight. 
And now, you know, if anybody else were to try to sell this, they're going to have to go source the same, you know, the, the same exact product to hop on this listing. Uh, so by tweaking one little element or even the color of a product, uh, it really helps deter other people from hopping on your listings. Um, another reason to do the whole private labeling thing is people in the U.S. like brand names. Yes, even if it's a brand you just made up and nobody's ever heard of, people like seeing a brand. That's why a lot more people shop at, you know, a Jewel Osco or a, I was going to say Cub Foods. I think they've been out of business for years. But uh, that's why a lot of people shop at, you know, stores and buy brand name products instead of going and buying products that aren't brand name. I'll think about cereal. You know, a lot of people like Cocoa Puffs better than they like uh, round cocoa chocolate balls. You know, people like brand names. Um, you know, our whole consumer, our whole, you know, consumer behavior is built around brand names and advertising. And we're used to seeing a, a brand name. So, uh, you know, recently I went to, uh, I think, Tiger Direct or something like that, I think it was, and I needed to get an HDMI cable. And uh, for around the same price, they had one HDMI cable that just came in a clear plastic bag with a sticker on it that said HDMI cable. And they had another one that, I don't, I don't know what they called it. We'll say they called it the Lightning HDMI cable. And it had a little logo showing how the, the caps were gold-plated and how much better it's going to be at transmitting signals and, and things like that. And... You know, essentially it's the same exact product. Uh, the one with nice packaging isn't any better than the other one. I checked the specs. The specs were all the same. But for like an extra 50 cents, I got one in a box. And even though I knew it's the same exact product, I bought the one in the box. So, uh, you know, it goes to show that people do like brand name products. Uh, now let's talk about uh, private labeling uh, buying from Alibaba versus buying from AliExpress. So pretty much all suppliers on Alibaba can offer custom designs product modifications, and logo printing. Uh, developing a completely new product is complex. Like I said, you probably need to get your own designs, have your own logos ready, etc. cetera. Uh, you need to have a well-made, well-drafted product specs, product materials, uh, appropriate file types, and a clear idea of what you want. Other things you may need to know are material specifications, colors, product packaging, designs, logos. So let's go over here and let's look at, uh, I don't know, look at this one right here. So it should say something about the colors available are black, tan, green, ranger green. Uh, the buckle is stainless steel. Now, sometimes it'll say, you know, buyer's choice or something. So if I want to make mine like a blued steel as opposed to a stainless steel, they'll let me do that. Um, let's see here. Uh, usage, advertising, gift, fashion. Okay, you know, let me find a better example of... Uh, I'm trying to find one where it says OEM to basically uh, colors. So these guys have over 300 colors you can choose from. If you contact the supplier, um, they'll be able to give you like a catalog or a, a color sheet of the different colors. Uh, the buckle is a plastic release with a whistle. Uh, the shackle. So you see here we have a couple different choices. You can have a D shackle. You can have a bow shackle. You can have a D shackle adjustable. Uh, I'm still looking for one that says OEM. Uh, let's look here. Stainless steel. Uh, you can pick a different different types of metal plating. Um, oh, logo. See, they don't have anything next to logo. Typically for logo, you'd see like buyer. Oh, laser logo. Okay. So these guys offer a laser logo. Some people may offer like screen printing or a laser logo. Uh, but by by checking out here, you can see what basically what the seller is, is willing to do for you. Some of them will tell you about the various types of packaging. I think we saw one a minute ago where it said in a bag. Some will say in a box. Some will say it comes with a hang tag. So you can kind of uh, work with them and negotiate how you want the packaging and things like that as well. Um, let's move over to AliExpress. Products sold on AliExpress are already manufactured and ready to be purchased. So these things are already made. They've already been bought by a trader. If you're just going to order 10 pieces, it's, you know, it's not as if you can say to them, hey, could you send these back to the factory and change the color on this? Well, no, they've already been made. Sometimes some AliExpress sellers will uh, put your logo on a product. I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, changing a product is a bit more complex, but if all you want is a logo printed on, it never hurt. Not all of them are going to be able to do it, but it never hurts to reach out to one of these sellers again through this messaging system, um, either direct messaging or contacting the seller and saying, hey, you know, you, they probably require you, you order a larger amount. But if you say, look, I, I want to get 50 of these. Is it possible to put my name or put my logo on them? They may be able to do that for you. Um, uh, 
basically wrapping up the whole kind of uh, custom design products and private labeling. AliExpress is really the place to go to if you're looking to do this. Uh, it's sometimes possible in AliExpress. Ask the sellers. Not all of them are going to do it, but you may luck out and find one who will. So that's basically how that works. Hey guys, in this section we're going to be talking about product certifications. Uh, some products such as plastics, electronics, and toys, among others, require standard product compliance. Uh, a perfect example of this is the whole hoverboard thing. A lot of hoverboards may have been okay to ship to certain countries, uh, but not to the U.S. because, you know, we require certain certifications such as CE, ROHS, um, and others. You know, some, some of these things may be okay to ship to Latin America, but not to the UK, or they may be OK to ship to Canada, but not to the US. And I think a perfect ex example of this is I think you, the UK may have some of the strictest product standards out there. And the reason I say this is because the, U, the UK uh, started blocking hoverboard uh, importations long before the US or any other countries did. Uh, also, if you have paid any attention to this or remember back, Amazon actually pulled hoverboards in the UK prior to doing so in the US. So different countries are going to have different certification requirements and different standards. Uh, many new importers and resellers assume that suppliers are compliant uh, because in the US, you know, if somebody's selling something, it's, it's probably okay. Uh, this isn't the case with AliExpress so, or Alibaba because you're ordering from China and people all over the world are ordering. And the product standards in Russia, for example, or parts of Africa or wherever else may be a lot lower than the US. Uh, also, um, in the case of AliExpress, because it's a business-to-consumer platform and because it's much more popular in like Latin America and Russia, a lot more people from there are ordering items, which means they're going to kind of cater to the certifications of those countries. Um, and if you're ordering a one-off product on Alibaba, it's probably, not, or I'm sorry, AliExpress, it's probably not going to grab the attention of customs. But if you're trying to import hundreds of products, well, at that point, it probably is going to grab their attention. And a perfect example of this, again, is hoverboards. Uh, even after the U.S. cracked down on hoverboards, you could order a single board or two boards, and, and they would come through no problem. However, if you tried to import 100 boards, you know, Customs was going to grab them, and they were going to check every single box. So uh, small quantities, things will probably slip through. Larger quantities, it's much more likely to be, you know, stopped by Customs. Uh, attempting to import products which are non-compliant can result in having your shipment seized by customs and returned to the supplier or even destroyed. Uh, and that's potentially leaving you out of money if you're not covered by Alibaba trade assurance uh, or some other protective measure. Uh, AliExpress also has their own uh, buyer protection program. And because you pay with a credit card on AliExpress, uh, you do have the ability to do a credit card chargeback. I really recommend people use this as a last resort. A, it's not really fair to sellers unless they're really jerks and aren't willing to resolve your situation. And B, you can actually harm your own credit or be blacklisted by credit card companies if you, if you do excessive chargebacks. So, um, uh, Blow is an example of some common certifications uh, for electronics, uh, CE, ROHS, EMC, Class A and Class B. For toys, EN71, for plastics, REACH. And in terms of things that need to be fire retardant, uh, FR, B1, and B2. Uh, so let's talk about Alibaba first. Uh, because Alibaba is made to order products and not already produced, you can ask for your supplier to make the products compliant with certain country standards. Uh, this is done by using certain types of materials and certain components um, required for compliance. So in the example of hoverboards, in order to be compliant in the U.S., the batteries needed to be properly wired, which meant each cell was individually charged and monitored, as opposed to the whole thing charging as a block. Um, and also, like, the uh, chargers needed to have cutoffs and fuses. Uh, most of these were not made like that, and that's why, you know, we had all the problems in the U.S. with fires. That's why Custom seized, you know, $10 million worth of boards in Chicago, etc., uh, more often than not, suppliers are used to importing into the USA, Canada, the UK, and the EU. However, you should always check and make sure their products and manufacturing processes are compliant. Um, typically, like some products right out of the box, it's going to be the same price whether it's you know compliant to the US or not. Uh, sometimes you may contact the supplier and say, "Hey, I want to order these speakers or whatever else," and if you say, and you know the price may be three dollars a unit, if you want it to be compliant to US standards you know, it may cost you $3.33 a unit. So you may have to pay a little bit more to make it compliant because it may use different materials. Uh, as for AliExpress, the products listed on AliExpress have already been produced 
it's a toss up whether these products are made compliant to the standards in the USA or not. Uh, compliant products tend to be more expensive and would make the supplier less competitive to the Russian, Latin American, and African uh, countries who have buyers. Uh, AliExpress is very popular among these countries. Uh, you, you guys know how when you watch like YouTube videos or like craziest drivers, worth road rage, it all happens in Russia. It seems like almost every Russian person has a dash cam in their car. And guess where most of those people buy the dash cams? Yep, you guessed it, AliExpress. Uh, so AliExpress is really popular in a lot of those countries. And because of that, a lot of the AliExpress products and suppliers tend to cater to those countries. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically, uh, whether you're, you know, this area is kind of a toss up. Whether you're buying on Alibaba or AliExpress, uh, you need to check and make sure items are compliant. But the one advantage of Ali, Alibaba is because products are made to order, you can request they be made compliant to US standards, whereas these products are already made. So if they're not compliant, they're not compliant. You got to go find a new supplier. Uh, let's talk about quality issues and risk. Uh, it can be risky importing products from outside your home country. I'll be honest, you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm not, as, as, not as experienced as a lot of people out there, but I definitely have, you know, my fair share of orders under my belt. And nonetheless, every time I place a large order, I'm always kind of sweating until, until the order actually clears customs and makes it to my home area. And even then, until I go pick it up and open up the boxes and see what I got, I'm always a little bit on edge. So there are risks involved. Um, some products aren't good quality. Uh, this is a case because uh, of the issues. Uh, oh, and it's also, you know, there's also a lot of scams out there as well. Um, when I was messing with hoverboards back before Christmas, uh, on three different occasions, I got scammed out of 500 bucks. Uh, on every single occasion, I sent the money via uh, Western Union. Uh, I probably should have learned my lesson after the first time. Uh, but, you know, I, th I thought I had a good rapport with these suppliers. What really surprised me is if you're going to burn me, why are you going to burn me for $500 when I'm about to spend $30,000 with you? Like, wouldn't you burn me on the larger order? But, you know, people are stupid, whatever. Uh, so let's talk about the risks and quality issues associated with Alibaba and AliExpress. So not all Alibaba suppliers are qualified to accept and produce your order, especially if you want custom-made products or products that meet certain specifications. Only certain factories are set up and approved to meet these certification requirements, and you'll need to investigate a lot of time investigating suppliers and making sure they are qualified to meet your standards, uh, as well as that they aren't going to scam you. So one way that I... I find uh, this isn't going to catch everyone. Let's see, supplier blacklist. Uh, if you do a Google search of supplier blacklist, uh, here are blacklisted suppliers. Here's companies who are scammers. So I, I've actually uh, managed to avoid a few scams just by looking at the supplier's bla blacklist. So uh, I forget how this works exactly. Typically, how I'll normally find it is, let's see. So we'll say this company is... Um, Milky Way 88, 888 store. So Milky Way 888 store supplier blacklist. This is typically how I'll do a search. Um, now, okay. So the only thing that comes up is AliExpress. I don't see any things here. Uh, let's look at one of these companies. Uh, um, Bluetooth speaker. But basically, there were a few times when I was talking with suppliers and I would go search them on the supplier blacklist and they would pop up. And then I knew, you know, I would basically hear somebody's story of how they got scammed and I would know not to deal with that. And you can actually report a bad supplier as well if you're taken advantage of. Um, let's see here. So this is the Shenzhen win. Let's see here. So we'll search them. I don't think these guys are going to show up, but. And then we'll type in. Uh, we don't even need all that supplier blacklist and not every supplier who scams people is going to have been reported. So, I mean, don't think because somebody doesn't come up that that means they're reputable, but you know, if I do a search on a company's name and they don't come up on the supplier blacklist, at least they're not somebody who scammed like dozens and dozens of people. So see here, we don't really see anything coming up with supplier blacklist. Uh, so that doesn't mean they're necessarily hundred percent safe, but I would probably be comfortable moving forward with them. Uh, uh, basically, I mean, in, in terms of making sure you avoid scams and get a quality product, you know, do a lot of research, um, you know, deal with suppliers who are 
gold suppliers who have trade assurance, who are assessed suppliers, as long as there's trade assurance, even trade assurance isn't perfect. Uh, but if someone sends you totally crap product, you do at least have some recourse. Same with PayPal, same with Alipay. Um, so let's see, then we'll go down to talk about uh, AliExpress a little bit. Uh, ordering from AliExpress is much more straightforward than, Al than Alibaba. There are scammers on Alibaba, but they never really get the best of you. Uh, I think on one or two occasions when I first started ordering hoverboards in small quantities, I ordered off AliExpress. I think in two instances, about four days after my order, I got a message from AliExpress saying something to the effect of, you know, something seems wrong with the supplier, or this seems like high risk. It, basically, I, I got a message basically saying that AliExpress canceled the order on my behalf uh, because there was some problem with the supplier. Uh, in other instances, I've had suppliers not send items, and I just open up a, a case with AliExpress buyer protection and I get my money back. And again, lastly, because you can pay by credit card, uh, this is a last resort, but worst case scenario, uh, if you are scammed, you can file a, a charge back with your credit card. I actually did this in one instance. Uh, the supplier was really playing games with me. I think I had like maybe, I don't know, maybe it wasn't a huge order, maybe four to $6,000 worth of hoverboards coming. Uh, I was promised them in, I think, 10 days. Uh, 43 days later, I still didn't have them. Uh, I contacted Ali, the Ali program or whatever, and for some reason, or the AliExpress buyer protection program, for some reason they kept letting the seller extend the time before I could, you know, officially close out my claim. So at that point, I just got sick of it. I went to my credit card company, Capital One. I said, I want to do a chargeback. They gave me the money back instantly. And it actually was kind of funny. About a week later, the items actually wound up, wound up arriving. I was shorted one item. Um, I wound up calling up my company saying, hey, reverse this charge, give the money back to the people, but, you know, hold back, you know, 200 bucks or whatever it was. Uh, so credit card chargebacks, you know, it, it is a good last resort if the seller is unwilling to work with you and if uh, the AliExpress buyer protection program uh, doesn't kick in and kind of save your butt there. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so ordering is much more uh, straightforward. Quality is subjective though. You should always order a sample before investing in a larger order. Uh, just recently I ordered some wooden baby teethers off of uh, AliExpress and they were terrible. I, I don't want to say they were terrible quality. They weren't properly sanded. So I only ordered a couple samples. I actually ordered them for my, for my uh, sister. Uh, but I figured, you know, I'm always open to new products and new categories. So I thought, you know, I'll check these out, see if they seem worthwhile. And these are supposed to be baby teethers. They weren't well sanded at all. They were, there were rough areas. There was like loose wood on there. If somebody put this in their baby's mouth, they'd, they'd probably be getting splinters or something like that. So no mom would ever give it to their baby. Terrible quality. Now imagine if I had ordered a thousand of these. Now I'm basically at the mercy of the seller to either take these back, uh, send me better sanded, better quality items, or worst case scenario, I'm left in a situation where I now have to hand sand a thousand little wooden baby teethers and that's just not something that i'm willing to spend my time on nor is the whole venture going to be profitable if i'm wasting that much time standing baby teethers so uh quality is subjective uh, because aliexpress caters to uh a lot of developing countries their idea of quality and your idea of quality may be two different things and again i come back to hoverboards one more time i think this is a perfect example of quality issues in different countries so in china you can buy a hoverboard for 70 dollars. yeah they're kind of crappily thrown together, but you know, for 70 bucks, who cares? Once these things get to the US and get marked up by importers and warehouses and resellers, you know, when, when hoverboards first kind of got mainstream, people were paying $500 for a really basic hoverboard. And <clears throat> people are, are really upset and shocked when they spend $500 for an electronic item and it winds up, you know, setting on fire or, or stopping working or falling apart a couple days later. And so quality is really subjective. Quality that may, things that may be considered quality in other countries may not be considered quality in your whole country. So always order samples, make sure that you're happy with the quality of an item. Uh, and especially with like electronics items. I just recently ordered a uh, action camera off AliExpress. It was a SJ4000. I believe it was the A9 model. And it's basically a GoPro knockoff. I was basically expecting very good quality. And uh, in terms of like image stabilization, it wasn't that great. Um, you know, if you move the camera quickly to the left or right, which is gonna happen if you're like riding a motorcycle wearing it on your helmet, uh, the picture got really jostly. Uh, inside and in indoor light, the, uh, 
the picture got really pixelated. So the quality just wasn't something that I was happy with. And again, I just ordered one of these for, for myself. I was thinking about starting a motorcycle vlog. Um, but uh, I was unhappy with the quality. So, you know, if I had ordered a thousand of these things and had to resell them, I probably wouldn't have been too happy about it. Um, so, yeah, so basically we've covered uh, quality issues and risks. I didn't talk too much about scams, but if at all possible, pay with PayPal. Um, Okay, guys, so, you know, I just realized that I didn't talk too much about the whole issue of scams, which is kind of a big issue. So with AliExpress, I really wouldn't be too concerned about scams. They have a very strong buyer protection program, plus you're paying by credit card, as I've mentioned. Alibaba is, is somewhat of a uh, wild west, I guess you could say, uh, because there's not really a built-in shopping cart. There is uh, TT payments, which is like an escrow system. There's also outside escrow systems you can use. Sometimes you only have to pay for 30% of the merchandise up front and you pay the other 70% when you get it. Uh, but basically my, my message is just uh, when you make the transition from Alibaba over to AliExpress, really take the time to research your supplier, really take the time to vet your supplier, deal with suppliers who've been in business for longer. So I mean, these are all different products, but if I had a choice between a guy who's been around two years, three years, or nine years, I'm going to take the nine year one. If I have a choice between a supplier who's a gold, uh, you know, gold supplier to me doesn't mean as much because basically it's just something they paid for. Uh, but a supplier who offers trade assurance, I'll take over a supplier who doesn't. I'll take an assessed of supplier over a supplier who's not assessed. So, you know, when it comes to Alibaba, vet your suppliers, make sure you have a good rapport with them. Uh, search them on supplier blacklist. Just be a little bit more cautious about what you do. Uh, so, uh, next we're going to talk about lead times. Um, how long to make your items. So, when preparing to place an order, there's three types of deadlines you need to concern yourself with. And these are order preparations, production time, and shipping time. So, we'll talk about Alibaba first. Uh, it can take weeks or even months before you finally find the right supplier. Uh, before you've confirmed your samples, negotiated your price, have a signed and stamped agreement. You can speed up this process a bit by just having a supplier send you a digital invoice and you can go right ahead and uh, do a bank transfer, wire the money, whatever. Uh, but keep in mind, you don't really know what you're getting and this is a little bit riskier. In some instances, when you're getting your product to market ASAP, it's worth doing this. So again, I come back to hoverboards one more time. Um, hoverboards, it was essential that you got the things right away. You know, hoverboards really started getting mainstream in like September, October, November of last year. Um, so if you were to, you know, trying to customize a product and, oh, you know, send me a, a paper invoice in the mail. And, you know, if you're doing all this stuff, you're not going to have your hoverboards till February when the entire market's over with and crashed. Uh, so in that case, that was one product where I was like, okay, the most important thing is just getting a product and getting to market. So I ordered from various people, you know, some, some products were better than others. I did wind up with some bad inventory. Uh, but I, I feel like in that situation, I made the right decision. And here's the reason why I've been contacted by a lot of people in the hoverboard industry who, you know, they may be placed an, or an order in September, October, November. They didn't even get their orders until January 24th, February 1st. And some of these guys had hundreds of hoverboards. Well, hoverboards were pretty much over and done with by then. So these guys are sitting on a fair bit of inventory that cost $250, $300. And now hoverboard prices on the retail are at that level. So these guys are basically going to really have to hustle and spend a ton of time moving this stuff just to break even. So in an instance like that, it's best just to get your product quick and get it to market. If your product isn't like a fad product or something that's going to like be out of fashion in three months, then you'd really want to be diligent and take the time to make sure everything's done properly. So uh, preparing an order can take from days to as long as six months, depending on if you're customizing a product, if you're altering a product, or if you're just slapping a logo on a product, the larger the order, as well as how complex a product is, can make it take longer. Uh, product time is much easier to predict as factories know how many out out units they can produce in a day, a week, a month. So again, let's go over and look at this. So uh, these people have a 50 piece minimum order quantity and they can produce 500,000 of these a month. So as long as your order's under 500,000, under 500,000, they can produce it for you in a month. Uh, let's see here. Let me pick up where I left off. Uh, 
Okay, one other thing I wanted to touch on here is, again, this is something I ran into with the hoverboard thing. So I was placing large orders. I was buying in, you know, as many, I think the largest order I ever placed was 350 hoverboards at a time. More often than not, my orders were like 50 units, 100 units, 150 units. But guess what? When I place my order, they start making my boards. If I'm ordering 100 units and another order comes in and orders 1,000 units a week after mine, they're going to bump me to the back of the line and they're going to work on a thousand piece order first. So just realize that the smaller you are, the less of a priority you are to them. Uh, and larger orders are going to get bumped up ahead of you, which may lengthen the process of you getting your product. Uh, as far as how long the order takes to ship from China, it basically comes down to the mode of transportation you choose. Air freight will take about five to seven days to arrive to the USA. Well, sea shipping will take longer. Uh, sea shipping is a lot cheaper. Um, and I think my last sea shipment took 33 days to arrive. Then the customs, uh, or I'm sorry, then the freight forwarder got it. Uh, I think it was probably about another three to four days till it was in Chicago. And then I had to wait for some documents to clear and for my freight forwarder to pay the warehouse that was holding it. Uh, so even though my item arrived in the U.S. in about 33 days, I think it took another five to eight days before I could actually go pick up the items. Uh, to give you an idea of how much cheaper sea shipping is, then air shipping. Uh, prior to Christmas, I ordered 10 hoverboards from China. It cost me $900 to ship them, and it took almost three weeks. Uh, I later ordered some hoverboards by sea, and I was able to ship up to the, the side. Basically, the cost was $250, and this was whether I used set one hoverboard or 100 hoverboards. I, I forget what they called it, if they call it a cube or a cubic unit or something like that. Uh, but basically, you know, whether I buy 10 boards or whether I buy 100 boards, it's going to cost me $250 to ship them. So uh, I paid $900 to ship 10 hoverboards. I could ship 100 hoverboards for $250. So that, that shows you really how much cheaper uh, sea shipping is. One thing you do have to take into effect is freight forwarders aren't cheap. I think it cost me about $550 to pay my freight forwarder to handle all the customs documents, uh, get my stuff from Houston to Chicago, and you know have it stored in a warehouse until I could pick it up. If you don't pick it up promptly, you'll be charged storage fees as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. You know the, the cost of the actual sea shipping is not typically taking into consideration your freight forwarder fees, uh, unless that is something that your supplier is also offering. Uh, if you're sourcing a large amount of products uh, or products which are heavier in nature, you'll definitely want to ship by sea. Uh, let's talk about AliExpress. So uh, since the products you're ordering from AliExpress are already manufactured, things will typically go a bit quicker. One small delay is the processing time of your payment. Uh, it, it'll tell you up front, but sometimes you have to wait three, five, or seven days from placing the order before it ships. So if we look here, um, estimated delivery time is 30 to 39 to 60 days, and it ships out within seven days. So even if I pay today on April 5th, uh, potentially it's going to be April 12th before they actually ship this out. To be quite honest with you, I'm not sure why that is. I don't know if they want you want to make sure the credit card payment clears or something like that. Uh, on other ones, you'll see that you know this ships out within three days. Sometimes you'll see this ships out within five days. But you know things aren't necessarily going to ship the same day that you order. Uh, you know what it might be. Sometimes uh, this seller, who's basically this isn't a manufacturer. This is like a reseller or trader in China. They may have to run over to the factory and buy the units uh, to ship to me. So I think that's why, you know, there's sometimes a delay of three days, five days, or seven days. Uh, something to keep in mind, but in general, AliExpress is typically gonna be a bit cheaper. Um, you don't need to worry about production time because the items are already produced. Uh, because you're sourcing from AliExpress and by definition sourcing smaller amounts, uh, you're most likely gonna be shipping by air unless the items you order are really large or really heavy. Pretty much everything I've ordered off AliExpress has shipped by air. I think the one exception to that, I was going to offer, uh, I was going to order some custom-made uh, uh, light fixture pieces, and they were made out of cast iron. And obviously, you know how heavy cast iron is, so the the seller told me it's too cost prohibitive to ship by air, and they were going to ship it by sea. Uh, but more often than not, AliExpress units will ship by sea. Um, and then lastly, AliExpress has the word "express" uh, in its name, so that must be for a reason express quick you get it uh sure it's not as quick as two-day amazon prime but it's often a heck of a lot quicker than ordering off alibaba and lastly let's just kind of summarize here so 
I recommend Alibaba if you can buy larger quantities, uh, ideally a few hundred units, so you can normally go a little bit smaller. Uh, the more expensive an item is, the, the smaller the order quantity. Uh, if I'm ordering like, I don't know, we'll say some type of expensive electronic that costs, you know, $50 a unit, well then the order, the MOQ or minimum order quantity may only be 20 units. If I'm ordering something like paracord bracelets that cost 20 cents, well, they're not going to do an order for me for 10 units because they're only making $2. So on something like paracord bracelets that cost 20 cents, they may require I order 1,000 pieces, which still in the grand scheme of things isn't that much money. Uh, I recommend AliExpress if you want to private, private label your products or customize products that are already offered. Uh, I recommend AliExpress if you want to import products with your own logo uh, or custom packaging. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have... Uh, your packaging made in China. You can have it here, made here in the U.S. You can order generic products from China and package them yourself when you get here. Uh, but in general, I recommend AliExpress. I'm sorry, Alibaba. If you want a private label, uh, I recommend Alibaba. If your products are price sensitive, if you're working on really tight margins, you're going to get a better price on Alibaba. So I'd recommend going there. And lastly, I recommend Alibaba if you are importing electronics, toys, plastic. Uh, or any other product that the EU or USA, uh, into the EU or USA, and therefore need to comply with certain standards because you can especially have your products made to meet those standards. Um, I recommend AliExpress if you are going to buy one to a hundred units per product, or if you're a consumer wanting to buy something for yourself. I recommend AliExpress if custom design, logo printing, and custom packaging are not important to you. Uh, like I said, you can in some cases private label products yourself, um, or there are a few AliExpress suppliers who will do it for you. But you know, if you're not really worried about private labeling, uh, you know, AliExpress can be a good way to go. Uh, I recommend AliExpress if your products are not that price sensitive. You know, something like a paracord bracelet. I'm not saying everybody can sell them at these prices, but if you can buy it on AliExpress for a dollar fifty and sell it for ten dollars, or you can buy it on Alibaba for a dollar and sell it for ten dollars. Is that 50 cents really going to make that big of a difference to you? Um, is it worth ordering a thousand pieces as opposed to just 10 pieces just to save that 50 cents? So if you're, if, if you're not working on really tight margins, it may be worth the convenience and ease of ordering on AliExpress. Uh, I recommend AliExpress if the nature of your products don't require them to adhere to any certifications. And lastly, I recommend AliExpress if you need your products right away. Um, so that pretty much wraps uh, wraps up this discussion. This is a pretty long video, so I appreciated it for any of you guys who sat through the entire thing. Um, again, the title of this uh, this little write up we did was "Should I order from AliExpress or Alibaba, and which is right for you?" Uh, I have a blog post, which is kind of what we used as the basis for making this video. Uh, so I will put the link to this blog post in the description box below this YouTube video uh, if you want to give it a read as opposed to watching the entire video. If you guys have any questions or comments for me, either leave them in the description box below here or if you want to visit my uh, blog here and leave a comment below, uh, that would be great as well. And I always appreciate uh, if you guys share my content, so either right down here or on the YouTube video itself. Uh, you know, if you have a buddy who's into private labeling, if you're a member of a, a Reddit group about selling an Amazon FBA or whatever else, uh, please share my video so that other people can watch it and other people can uh, can pick up some advice and tips for it as well. Uh, and lastly, if you guys have any... Uh, I'm sorry, let me stop that. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click that subscribe button at the bottom left. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And lastly, if there's anything you you guys want me to make a video about, you know, if there's a topic you're not familiar with or not comfortable with, if there's something you want to know more about, again, leave it in the comment section below, and I'd be happy to make a video explaining whatever it is you want to learn. So uh, thank you. I really do appreciate you guys watching this. Uh, check back for more videos, and I will talk to you guys next time.